So I've been in blockchain for a long time. We got it in 2010. We didn't call it blockchain. We just called it Bitcoin because that's what we had. We had Bitcoin. And um, I've got to have the privilege of watching this industry evolve. And um, currently, um, we've grown a lot. This year, well, 2017, we raised almost $4.2 billion in ICOs. And I know this is 3.6, but that's because it's a constantly evolving number. I've been doing some version of this speech for six months or so, and that number just kept climbing and climbing and climbing. And if you look at what we did in 2016, we raised $100 million. So that's great. High velocity industry. Fantastic for blockchain. In 2012, we had a, you know, 71 blockchain patents, which was a lot. But in 2016, 469, we actually finished out 2017 with 832. So there's a lot of movement in this space. People are taking interest in it. Um, in 2013, before, if you heard Bitcoin or blockchain, um, most people didn't know what you were talking about. And if they did, they thought that you were, in, if you were involved in drug dealing on the dark net. Uh, I just got back from Davos. In Davos, they had a four-story uh, building called Crypto HQ. Blockchain was on literally every stage at Davos, and everybody at the World Economic Forum knew what cryptocurrency was. So blockchain, we're breaking through. We're making, we're making good on the promises that we've been saying for years. And it's a fantastic place to be, and it's really exciting. We're going to grow, we're gonna grow uh, 16x over the next seven years. That's what we're slated at. And these are actually pretty conservative estimates. We could actually do a lot better than this. But we have an issue, and a lot of people don't want to talk about it. There's a lot of interesting ICOs, and you have a lot of great ICOs to choose from today, but every ICO that got on the stage is suffering from the problem that we're working on right now. And it's this. We surveyed 200 Fortune 500 executives, and 188 of them have plans to implement blockchain technology, which is a great stat. But of those 188, only 12 of Fortune 500 executives actually felt that they could find the talent to implement their plans for blockchain. It's because of this. In the world, there are 14 available jobs for every single blockchain developer on Earth. In an industry where we plan on growing 16x over the next few years. This is a major problem. So there's a, problem, there's a potential for an industry-wide bottleneck, which we already have. Everyone here that's in blockchain, that owns a blockchain company or works with a blockchain company, you absolutely know that it is extremely difficult to hire talent, sometimes impossible. This is a threat to sector implosion, really. This is the largest existential threat to our industry as a whole, period. Tezos raised $252 million last year, and they're imploding right now. And their internal memos cite failure to attract engineering talent is the reason they couldn't gain traction. That's how bad it is out there. And that's for blockchain companies that already exist and already have relationships within, within the network. Imagine if you're a legacy company, like an IBM, and you're trying to, hard to get into the space, and you need to convert existing developers to blockchain. It's almost impossible for you to, for you to attract talent. So we're going to see a lot more of this, that blockchain projects get stalled indefinitely. All of these wonderful things that blockchain's going to change the world, the dreams that we've been promising, the promises we've been making to everyone about how we're going to make the world better, more fair, more meritocratic, all of that is at risk because we don't have the people to actually build them. So there's reasons for this. Blockchain tech moves very quickly, and our educational system is very bloated. It doesn't move very quickly. Blockchain devs are paid significantly more to be in production than they are to be in a classroom everywhere. Um, and there's, not a really a there's a complete lack of industry standards for education and certification. There's 18.5 million developers on the face of the earth right now. And by 2019, that number is supposed to grow to 26 million. There's about 4,000 developers on Earth that call themselves blockchain developers. And the vast majority of them are really overstating that they're a blockchain developer at all. The truth is, is that people that you would want to work with on any level, there's probably less than 1,000 of them on Earth, and people that you can trust and can actually build blockchain core technologies are probably less than 200 on Earth. So we have a huge problem as an industry. So what's the solution? Early last year, I met the founder of Kingsland University. He was a very forward-thinking man. He's in this room. His name's John Souza, right here up front, supporting me. And uh, through a series of conversations, I convinced John that this was a huge issue. And I said, hey, I know that this is different than your business model, but what if we stand up a fully accredited school for blockchain development 
and take a real stab at solving what is the largest problem in our industry. And that's exactly what we did. Academy School of Blockchain, the world's first fully US-accredited school for blockchain development. We do blockchain development where we're really a full circle solution. We give developers, executives, universities tailored options for blockchain education. And we connect our graduates with companies that are seeking to hi hire them, finding them meaningful places within an ecosystem that we all care very much about. What we've done is we've created a six week full immersion course where we can take a qualified software developer and we train them up on blockchain best practices. What happens is week one, we're doing blockchain primitives, and then week two, we're going into second tier technologies. Week three, we start talking about Ethereum, decompiling the missed client, um, start working with distributed transactions and dApps. Then we go deep dive on Solidity, and um, there's actually two hands-on projects in the class. There's a hackathon-based project um, for Solidity where you're building a distributed application with your classmates, and the final project for the class is building a distributed application yourself. So people that go through our, um, our course, it's entirely hands-on. They leave with a body of work of having actually coded things, having actually built wallets, having actually built dApps, having a real understanding of how this works. And we have a very stringent process to get people into the class. So we only take qualified developers that can pass an entrance exam so that we have quality developers that are coming out of the program. Um, Kingsland University's background, we've trained over 275,000 students worldwide in technology. So this isn't new to us. Um, we're good at doing this. We've actually done training for some very major companies, lots of Fortune 500 companies we've done training for in the past, and we will continue to provide high-quality training for people now in the blockchain space. We're SACS accredited. That's the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. There's six regional accrediting bodies in the United States. SACS is the Southeast. And what this does is it gives us, um, it gives us uh, um, access to Title IV and Title IX funding, which is all of the free financial aid for student assistance and Montgomery GI Bill um, uh, vocational rehabilitation from the Veterans Administration. The TLDR on this is hundreds of billions of dollars in educational resources are now available to learn blockchain for the first time in history in the US. We have SCORM compatibility. What that means, we have an online lear learning management system that uses the SCORM protocol. What SCORM is, is it's an API that accredited universities worldwide can plug into to syndicate our content in their universities. And we already have major universities lining up that want to use our content at their universities. So you could see your local university providing blockchain content brought to you by Academy. Currently, what our role model is, is that we're running training classes with trainers in them. We are hiring, we're hiring competent, professional, technical trainers, and we're running them through our curriculum under the guise that they will take that and then they will then be deployed out to markets worldwide. This isn't like a one-time place or just teaching in Atlanta or just teaching in New York. This is taking this education to every major market on Earth, everywhere that this is needed, and continuing to grow that number of people that can teach our blockchain curriculum worldwide. Skip through this. We are, uh, our advisors are some of the best people on the planet. These are the people that actually built the technology, people like Craig Sellers, Sellers who built Tether, Omni, Vitomic, Steve Dack, one of the core Ethereum developers who actually was in the Genesis block, uh, Gabe Kerfman from, um, from RSK Labs, and uh, Dan Larimer from EOS, uh, BitShares, Steemit. We acquired SoftUni, which is the uh, largest software development university in southeastern Europe. We just did that and announced it last week. Um, these guys are 2015 Forbes Startup of the Year. Really great guys, fantastic technical staff, and they are running our current course, which we started today. So we actually have classes that started running today. Um, Academy Token, that's why we are here. Uh, so we are running a, a, a ICO. We're raising $50 million currently um, for the token. You can use it for tuition service placement fees, and you can use it for gamified learning on our LMS, which is like we've been able to incentivize good behaviors on the learning management software so that we can incentivize the things that make courses run better and make students do better in it. Things like um, if you're helping out in class, we can give you extra tokens so that um, you're incentivized for that behavior. If you're the best in the class, you don't pay for your tuition, things like that. And you can use this from our human resources side to pay for developer acquisition for your company. So it's a good thing to get in. We burn 70% of our tokens that come in as a token mechanic. 
because um, we, we consider it sort of like a gift card. Once it's spent, we don't want to use it, so if you pay us for a service, we burn that. So there's a constant deflationary method in our services, um, and uh, we de uh, dedicate 15% of the funds to a dedicated scholarship fund and 15% to community development, and that's the end of my time. Wow, it's hard to do in 10 minutes. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. Take care.